Hi, everyone. I'm Jiwon from Samsung Research. I'm here to present our research paper, which is a SAR compatible verifiable encryption, or in short, we call it SABER. And this is a joint work with Che Kyung, Jihei, and Hyunok, which is from Z Crypto Incorporated, Gukmin University, and uh, Hanyang University. Okay, so let's dive into the paper right away. So to start with, SAVER is a very fiber encryption. So let's take a quick look at the original definition. Verifiable encryption is a public key encryption scheme, which proves that a cipher text encrypts a plain text, but also with satisfying a certain given relation. Well, uh, back then, the main focus was mostly on the validity of the message. In other words, whether the cipher text was generated correctly. And, uh, you can actually take it as a special case relation. For example, you can prove that the message M exists uh, as a discrete log of some element Y for some generator G. So from the verifier side, even though she cannot decrypt the message, she can still check if the uh, given statement is really true. And SAVER is also SNARK compatible. So I'd like to briefly summarize simple definition of ZK SNARKs, which is a short-term language for zero knowledge, succinct, and non-interactive arguments of knowledge. With the ZK SNARK, the prover can convince the verifier that some public statement X holds for some public relation R. And it should be uh, zero knowledge, meaning that the prover can convince the verifier without revealing any witness-related information. And the proof should be succinct. It means that the proof size and verification should be really short, like uh, at least uh, sublinear to the relation constraints. And it should be arguments of knowledge, or it should satisfy knowledge soundness meaning that only honest provers can convince the verifier with generating a verifying proof. Well, recently, there has been many, many great works that push forward the practical implementation of ZK SNARKs. And uh, it's now, it, it now became possible to define any desired relation by writing some simple codes, then compiling the code to generate the verifying proof right away. Well, uh, thanks to these remarkable improvements in ZK SNARKs, we can now actually extend the concept of verifiable encryption to the generic version of verifiable encryption, where you can prove any desired properties adapted to your needs. The relation doesn't have to be special case anymore. You can just simply use ZK SNARKs to define some new properties you want to prove. Then the ZK SNARK will take care of the uh, rest of the proving jobs for you. Now imagine we have this generic protocol for verifiable encryption. We can think of many, many practical applications uh, involving some real life situations. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some application example scenarios. First one would be electronic commerce system. Let's say uh, there are some consumers who wanna buy some software products, which is uh, encrypted before the actual payments. But still, uh, let's say before the payment, uh, the consumer at least wants to check that if the product includes some uh, certain expected metadata, or legitimate copyrights uh, to make sure that the product is not crashed or distorted under the counter. Well, in this case, we can use the verifiable encryption for the product and uh, let them prove these specific properties to convince consumers who want to check these properties before actually being able to decrypt the message. Uh, we can also imagine some contract sharing platform. Say uh, uh, there is a public sharing platform, like uh, it can be a simple government website or even non-trusted platforms such as uh, blockchains. And users are made to upload their uh, contract documents on this platform. But of course, the document should be encrypted for the sensitive privacy issues. But uh, from platform side, the public wants to know uh, if the contract is under some certain restrictions. Like for example, the public verifiers may wanna know if the contract is made under some uh, restricted legal boundaries, or we can also think of some uh, policy related scenarios where the government calls for uh, some certain contract qualifications, which satisfy some given conditions such as uh, type, uh, date or deposits. Again, we can think of apply, applying the verifiable encryption to let the users encrypt and also prove that the uh, contract message satisfies the given requirements. Another uh, advanced example would be an electronic voting system, especially when we need an anonymous settings for coercion resistance. 
we can let the voters make a public group and construct a membership-based accumulator and let the voter make the votes by encrypting the vote message, but with also proving that he has a right to vote as in he's a member of the accumulated group. And the vote is certainly generated as a single cast to the ballot candidate. Well, now that we know uh, the generic verifiable uh, encryption can be very useful, let's see how we can actually construct the verifiable encryption in real life. Well, the simple solution would be just to prove everything with the ZK snark, including the encryption. And you know, this is very straightforward. You just put everything you need into the relation. Uh, you first define some properties that you want to prove, and then simply encrypt the message inside the proof relation so that the uh, ZK snark can, at the end of the day, implicitly uh, guarantee both the property of the message and the resulted ciphertext is an encryption for that exact message which satisfies the given property. Uh, but unfortunately, this naive approach by, might undergo some practicality issues because uh, this simple encryption takes quite longer than we expect. Uh, let's say, for example, we are just encrypting a single RSA block. Uh, well, it depends on the specific algorithms and message types you're using, but still approximately it may take uh, one to eight seconds for the proving time. And even when considering some efficient version of SNARKs such as GRAS16, the structure reference string may grow to uh, more than 200 megabytes. When we, uh, you might say the number looks quite okay. It may be acceptable, but uh, we need to keep in mind that this is the case for the single block simple encryption case. When we consider some more complicated encryption or, and especially when the message size grows, this proving cost gets very, very heavy and it makes us hesitate to apply this protocol to be used in more like uh, real life complicated settings as mentioned before in the application examples. So to mitigate this problem, an idea called commit and prove was proposed by Lego Snark, which let us achieve modular composition of Snarks. The main, main idea of Lego Snark was to uh, make the commitment of the message ahead of time and then prove something about the message later, anytime later. And the real benefit from this is that we can now connect multiple uh, commit carrying Snarks with pre-published commitments so it means that we can now split the relation and prove them separately, but then we can compose the proofs all together by using the commit and proof snark framework. Then the verifier can see that the entire relation given by the prover holds, but with separate proofs for each sub relation. Now let's see what happens if we reflect this Lego snark concept to our generic verifiable encryption case. We can now split the relation for the verifiable encryption we prove some properties about the message and also prove encryption of the message separate from these uh, message properties. But unfortunately, we still cannot avoid proving this encryption process. It might uh, mitigate the proving cost a little bit, but we must at least prove this whole encryption of the message with the ZK snark, and it does not neatly resolve the uh, practicality problem we mentioned. To really, really avoid this proving of the encryption once and for all, we need to come up with a new framework of, let's say, encrypt and prove. Compared to the commit and prove, it can be interpreted as encrypt the message first and then prove about the message later. And of course, more importantly, we need to come up with a new commit carrying encryption scheme so that we can somehow encrypt the message first without any proof related burdens, but still be able to use this cipher text to somehow connect this encryption to the existing proofs about the message with the commit and prove, or let's say encrypt and prove framework. Now let's see how to achieve this snark compatible encryption by starting with the uh, understanding the basic principle that lies behind the pairing based snarks. Oh, and please be aware that this might involve some math related jibber jabbers, but I'll try to be as simple as possible to stay focused on intuitional ideas rather than uh, rigorous computations. So, uh, well, I believe most of the crypto audiences are familiar with the uh, pairing function. Just take it as we have an efficient function, which takes an input of two group elements uh, uh, as a generators. And then the map is bilinear 
as in uh, the pairing of g to the a and h to the b is uh, equal to the pairing g a to the a times b. In SNARKs, the pairing function is used to, uh, used to enforce an equality check at the verification in the form of a times b equals to c, just as simple as that. This a, b, and c can be actually interpreted as proof elements. Well, within the nth degree polynomial of relation constraints, the prover is going to encode these statements and witnesses in each element in a way that they are balanced to be canceled out in the pairing base equality check. This technique is sometimes called uh, linear encodings or homomorphic encodings. And the goal of these linear encodings is to let the prover work with the polynomial, which makes it hard to tell a lie, because even a tiny difference of these encoding values will distort uh, the whole polynomial evaluation points, and it will make it almost impossible to pass the equality check in the verification. Well, let's look into more details by jumping into the GRAS16 construction example. Uh, here's what happens if we want to say apply the verifiable encryption for some message properties. Well, I warned you we have some dirty math here, but don't worry, you can actually ignore most of the given variables. They are only here to show you which goes into what part, and especially for these uh, statements and witnesses. You see that uh, here's the statement defined as field elements from A1 to AL, and here's the uh, witnesses uh, defined as uh, up to N. And these statements and witnesses are linearly encoded into both A and B elements, while in the proof element C, only witness values are encoded. Well, the main intention here is that we are letting the verifier input the statement himself, which is represented here uh, as GI to the AIs or MIs, since the message itself is the input statement. So basically, what the verifier is doing here is to add the encodings of given statements to the original element of C, which only contains uh, witness related encodings. By doing this, if this combination of uh, witness, witness related element C and the given statement inputs by the verifier itself passes the quality check, then the verifier can be convinced that the given statements are really true with respect to the uh, defined relation polynomials. Well, now when we uh, look into the statements, uh, let's see what it looks like. Then actually it looks really familiar, obviously taking the form of a simple discrete log element. You see, when we look at the uh, LGAML encryption, there is also an exponential type of encryption, which let the decryptor uh, solve the short discrete log problem, for example, four to eight bits. And it's quite easy to see that the statement GI to the MI can be transformed to this uh, LGAML ciphertext by just simply adding some random values to blind the original message. Uh, well, of course, we need to split the message to short bits here, since we need to let the decryptor find uh, g to the m and retrieve the real message by finding the short discrete log. Uh, so you can take it as this message splitting is already included in the relation for uh, proving the message property. Now, at this point, What's left is uh, just adjusting the verification to maintain the original equality check to hold. Uh, first, we know that we're going to input this transform algorithm-like ciphertext inside a statement. Uh, then, of course, these additional blinding factors are going to break down the original equality check, right? So now all we have to do here is to do some math to rebalance this equality check and let the equation hold again, and all jobs are done. Of course, it's not as simple as it looks. It involves some uh, like some decisions where to encode the additional values, and there's much more security-related parameters, uh, which is omitted here. But I'm just skipping all of that to keep this idea simple and easy. So at the end of the day, this rebalanced equality check of this ciphertext can guarantee the soundness of both encryption and uh, statements. The given ciphertext is an algorithm ciphertext, which is decryptable to the secret key holder. And even though the verifier cannot decrypt the message, it can input this ciphertext to the zk snark like verification, along with the proof, of course. And then the verifier can see that the message that lies behind the ciphertext also satisfies some properties defined in the relation. Well, to see the practicality of the Sabre pro pro protocol, we implemented the Sabre by modifying uh, JSNARC. So basically, 
The message property is compiled through JSNARC, and we implemented the extended verification uh, to take this proof and the Saber ciphertext instead of the original GRAS16 verification. For the sample message property, we picked the simple SHA-256 hashing relation, which approximately required like 25,000 constraints. So the uh, goal here is to output the ciphertext of message M while also proving that the message M hashes to the given value H. So here are some simple results. You can see that the encryption time is very, very trivial from one to 10 milliseconds. And most of the total proving time comes from the zk snark proof time for the hash function. So compared to the proving of encryption, which takes uh, like one to 10 seconds, with using Saber, you can have peace, peace of mind, at least when it comes to the encryption itself. The public key and structure reference string size also grow linear to the message sizes, but compared to proving the encryption with ZK snark, you can say that it's much more practical and reasonable. So now here's the quick summary of today's presentation. Saber is a generic verifiable encryption, which means that uh, it can prove any non-special case uh, desired properties of the message. And also Saber is SNARK compatible, that the ciphertext can be verified together with SNARKs. And Saber extends the commit and proof framework to the encrypt and proof framework, which makes the encryption itself composable to other commit carrying label SNARK gadgets. And finally, Saber is proven under many formally defined security notions, such as uh, knowledge soundness and indistinguishability of the chosen plainness, chosen plain text model. And Saber also has a uh, much more interesting feature such as uh, additive homomorphism, verifiable decryption or re-randomizations. Also, if you're ready for some more, please don't hesitate to look into our paper. Uh, so this is the end of our talk. Uh, and I appreciate for all of your interest on the presentation. I've listed the contact information here. So please feel free to send us an email if you have any questions or suggestions on the paper and you're very, very welcome to get in touch. So thank you and hope you enjoy your conference.